the Sikhs are considered to be one of the premier warrior races, but even they have limits. Well, in the Battle of Chamkar, 40 of these warriors faced insurmountable odds as they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Mughal horde. Hello and welcome to the History Channel. Today, we are going to talk about a legendary battle between the Sikhs and the Mughals. This battle is also known as the Second Battle of Chamkar and was fought between the Khalsa, led by Guru Gobind Singh, and the Mughal army and Ajmer Chand's League of Rajput Hill Chieftains. So, let us see how this battle played out. The Rajas were alarmed by the Guru's growing authority and influence in their territory. In the first battle of Anandpur, even the Mughal generals had been unable to defeat the Guru. As a result, the Rajas of many hill states gathered at Bilaspur to examine the situation, including Jammu, Nurpur, Mandi, Kulu, Guler, Chamba, Srinagar, Dadwal, and Hindu. Raja Ajmer Chand of Kalur, Bim Chand's son, urged creating an alliance to counter the Guru's growing authority. As a result, the Rajas banded together and marched on Anandpur. They wrote to the Guru, requesting that he pay the rent arrears for Anandpur, which was part of Ajmer Chand's jurisdiction, and leave the city. The Guru claimed that the land was purchased by his father and so belongs to him. Under the leadership of Jagatullah, a considerable number of Rangars and Gujars joined the hill Rajas. Duni Chand led a force of 500 warriors from the Mahja area to help the Guru. Reinforcements from the other areas also arrived to help the Sikhs. The Guru had responsibility over the forts of Logar and Fahigar. Sher Singh and Nahar Singh were sent to protect Logar, while Uda Singh was assigned to Fatigar as the main guard. The Guru's forces were attacked by the hill Rajas who were forced to retreat. After a quick meeting, they agreed to execute a three-pronged attack. Ajmer Chand led his men to assault Anandpur from the front. Raja Kisari Chand of Jaswal attacked from the right flank and Jagatula attacked from the left. Sahib Singh killed Jagatula in the subsequent combat. Congress Raja Guman Chand rallied his warriors, but they were unable to destroy the Guru's armies. The Rajas convened another meeting, during which Ajmer Chand recommended that the Guru and the Rajas reconcile. Many Rajas agreed but Raja Kisari Chand of Jaswal disagreed, suggesting a more aggressive struggle the next day to drive the Guru out of Anandpur. The Raja's army made another attack the next day, laying siege to the city. For weeks, the Guru's soldiers successfully defended themselves. Raja Kisari Chand then dispatched an inebriated elephant to breach the Logar Fort's gate. To smash the barrier, the elephant's body was covered in steel and a spear was thrust from its forehead. Vaisahitar Singh, a devotee of Guru, successfully drove the elephant away with his spear, Nagni Barcha. With his sword, Mokamsi slashed the elephant's trunk. This forced the huge creature to flee. The injured elephant returned to the Raja's camp trampling numerous men beneath its hooves. Meanwhile, Uday Singh assassinated Kisari Chand and the Raja of Handur was seriously injured in a battle with Sahib Singh. As a result, the Raja's army was forced to flee. The army of Kangra's Guman Chand assaulted Anandpur the next day. Guman Chand was killed in the combat, which lasted till dark. The Rajas subsequently abandoned their plans to drive the Guru out of Anandpur and returned home. The Hill Rajas negotiated a peace accord with the Guru after the war, requesting him to leave Anandpur temporarily. 
The guru had crossed the Sarsa River and stopped at Chamkaur after leaving Anandpur on the night of December 6-7, 1705. They requested permission from the city chief to sleep in their haveli for the night. The older brother refused to provide him refuge because he believed it would be unsafe. However, the younger brother agreed to let them spend the night there. Despite assurances of safety, Mughal troops were on the lookout for Guru Gobind Singh in order to seize his head as a trophy. They laid siege to the haveli after discovering that a group of Sikhs had taken refuge there. The Mughals commanded an army of about a million warriors, including Pathan and Turk regiments. On the eve of the fight, the Guru only had 40 troops under his leadership. The real combat is reported to have taken place outside the Guru's resting mud fort. Negotiations failed and the Sikh warriors decided to fight the superior Mughal armies, allowing their guru to flee. Gobind Singh was forced to heed the decision of the people and flee at night due to a Gurmata or Sikh consensus. The Sikh fighters are said to have been able to confront the large number of the Mughal army due to their training in the Sikh martial technique of Shastar Vidya. Officers of the Mughal horde, Khawaja Muhammad and Nahar Khan, dispatched a message with conditions of treaty demanding allegiance to Islamic rule on December 7, 1705 at first dawn, which the Guru, his sons, and gallant soldiers unanimously refused. Elder Sahib Zada Ajit Singh responded angrily, yelling at the messenger to keep quiet and returned to his superiors. The Guru then declared war on the enemy. The first Sikh came out and yelled the Jaikara slogan, Sat Sri Akal, just as he was about. The next Sikh appeared on the battlefield as soon as the sound of Sat Sri Akal resonated throughout the battlefield. The Nawab was astounded at the quality of the Sikh warriors. Six Sikhs, Muhar Singh, Kirat Singh, Anand Singh, Lal Singh, Kisar Singh, and Amalak Singh set off with the Guru's blessings to prove their merits. Despite overwhelming odds, the Sikhs inflicted massive casualties on the Mughals, but they were severely wounded and killed. Ajit Singh then went in front of his father and said, Pitaji, Dear Father, grant me to go and fight on the battleground and grace me with the chance to make my life productive and worthwhile in service of the Panth. Guru Gobind Singh handed his beloved son a weapon and embraced him. Baba Ajit Singh's face had yet to develop a beard or mustache, indicating how young he was. He did, however, give his son permission to fight. By this time, the sun was about to rise. Guru witnessed Mughal generals plotting to take Chamkaur Fort in one fell swoop. Soon, the Mughal generals encircled the fort. The Sikhs made a benti request to Guru Sahib at this time, requesting that he leave with the Shahib Zadi because there was no other way out of the siege. Guru, on the other hand, assured them that there was no distinction between the Singhs and the Sahibzada. All of you are my sons. We shall triumph and we will all be set free. Baba Ajit Singh bravely and heroically emerged from the fort, joined by five other Singhs, including Bai Mukham Singh, one of the original Panj Pyare. Guru stood on top of the fort, watching the combat unfold. On all four sides, there was quiet. They yelled Jai Kare as they entered the fight. Ajit Singh and the five Sikhs rushed toward the enemy, demonstrating remarkable courage, bravery, and weapon abilities. The enemy was immediately repulsed 
and many Mughal and hill forces met their deaths. Such was the fury of the Sikh contingent and the dedicated, continuous, and precise support from the Haveli fortress that this small force was able to kill dozens of enemy soldiers. One side of the opposing army was completely paralyzed under this assault. If any other side tried to intervene, the defenders on top of the fortress would shower down arrows, which would cause the enemy to retreat. However, soon the fatigue of the battle and the sheer numbers of the enemy began to overwhelm the six fighters. Slowly, they began to take casualties. By the end, Ajit Singh Sahib Zada was completely surrounded by the enemy. During the fighting, he broke his sword and picked up a spear to face the enemy. But all his bravery and skill could not overcome the numerical disadvantage that he was facing. So after some time, he too fell. Seeing his son fall, Guru Gobind uttered a cry full of emotion and courage as a salutation to his god for giving him such a brave and noble son. When the news of Ajit Singh's demise spread through the fort, Jujhar Singh went to his father and expressed his desire to fight. He said, Permit me to go where my brother has gone, dear father. Don't tell me I'm too young. It's me, your son. I am one of your Singhs, a lion. I'll show you that I'm deserving of your trust. I will die fighting with my back to the enemy, the guru in my heart, and the nam on my lips. Gobind Singh got up and embraced his son and wished him the best of luck for the fight to come. He entered the battle with Himat Singh and Sahib Singh and three other warriors. As they rushed into battle, they began to kill enemies left and right. Such was the ferocity of the attack that the six Sikhs managed to clear a 35-meter area within the enemy rank. The Sikhs stood with their backs to each other and continued to face wave after wave of enemy. Meanwhile, the Guru and his soldiers in the fortress continued to fire arrow after arrow into the enemy ranks. Such was the precision of their shots that not even one of their own soldiers was hit. But once again, the numbers prevailed over strength and valor, and Guru's second son also succumbed to the enemy blades. By the second and third day, only 11 out of 40 Sikhs remained. Daya Singh and Dharam Singh, the two remaining Panj Piyari, were among the 11 Singhs that remained, along with Man Singh, Sangat Singh, Sant Singh, and six others. At Kesgar Sahib, we witnessed you beseeching the five dear ones to initiate you with Amrit. These five urged Guru Gobind to go. You had previously stated, I am a Khalsa, and the Khalsa is mine. Today, we implore you to leave Jamkar and flee to a safer location in the name of the Khalsa. Guru Gobind was forced to comply with their requests. It was determined that Guru, Man Singh, and the two Panj Piyare would depart the fort and that Sant Singh would be dressed up as Guru Gobind since he resembled Guru Sahib uncannily. Guru Gobind murdered the few Mughal troops on duty before fleeing, and his party vanished into the night. They had earlier agreed to meet on the outskirts of Machiwara, 27 kilometers away, if they had split off. The Mughals began an all-out assault on the castle as the sun rose. During the battle, attempts to breach the enclosure resulted in the deaths of two Mughal officers, Nahar Khan and Gaihirat Khan, as well as many of their troops. The Sikh warrior's brave sacrifice held off the attacking hordes and stopped the stronghold from being completely overrun. After hours of hammering, they eventually penetrated the fort, but Sangat Singh, Sant Singh, and the surviving Sikhs rushed out on horseback. 
they were able to inflict huge losses on the enemy, but they were slain in the end. So that is all the time we had today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you all next time.